What's up, people? TL and me, you now back in, back in the house once again. Just want to chop it up with y'all, and it's a question that's being asked, and um, I'm here to answer that question for those of the people who's been asking this question, and for those who maybe not even thought of the question, but now that I mention it, would love to know the answer, and Hopefully you be thankful for the answer. So the question is, can I wholesale properties that are listed with the agent? And the answer to that question is, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Now, the difference maker in a deal like this, you may have to double close it. And more than likely, you're going to pay some earnest money. Versus when you're dealing directly with the seller, majority of the times you won't double close it or won't have to double close it. And you really don't have to pay any earnest money to most sellers. So that's the difference maker. So when you're dealing with that agent, you have to, they're going to want earnest money uh, just for something to say in good faith and the going rate is around five hundred dollars you can talk them down from that i have in the past i talked them down all the way to a hundred dollars and my rebuttal for that objection when they ask for earnest money if you must know and would like to know is i tell them well i don't like my money being tied up in escrow because it's dead it's dead money to me the seller can't spend it i cannot spend it you cannot spend it, being the agent. So it's really not working for nobody, and I need my money working. If I pay five hundred dollars earnest money for every property that I'm going to buy, I wouldn't have any money to close deals. So I need my money always working. And then I throw my offer out to them to say, "Well, I'll be willing to willing to pay a hundred dollars earnest money deposit." And a lot of times they they be like, "Okay, let's do it." So pretty basic pretty easy on how you can overcome paying a $500 earnest money deposit when you're dealing with the agent over a property so don't get discouraged by that you may may even be able to talk down further than 100 that's just where I was at with it when whenever I did a deal with the agent involved I pay around a hundred dollars, which you know you have a due diligence period to where you can get that money back. Roughly, typically, I say into in, in between ten to fourteen days. So, if you have a property under contract for thirty days with the agent, and then you have a a contingency clause to where you can get your earnest money back, whether you pay a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, ten dollars, whatever, right? You have a contingency clause in there to where you have a due diligence period between really seven to 14 days, I would say. Whichever one y'all agree upon. But that's like the going rate between seven to 14 days. So what that means in that seven to 14 days, you will go inspect that property, find out everything you can possibly find out about this property. Um, and if you find something that you don't like, back out within that seven to 14 days and get your earnest money deposit back. You lose no money. Now what that does, like even when you're wholesaling it, so if you if you got, if you're dealing with a property that's listed with the agent and you have it under contract for 30 days, but you have a, a 14, let's say you have a 14 day due diligence period with this property. So that means you're gonna blast this thing out time you get it under contract to your buyers and hope for the best hope hope that you can get a buyer to close this deal within that 14 day period or at least get it under contract within that 14 day to be able to close with this buyer because if you if you don't feel that strong about the deal after that length of time after those 14 days you probably want to get your money back so what you're doing you're shortening your contract that's basically what you're doing you're shortening your contract you you got it under contract for 30 days, but if you don't find your end buyer within that 14 day due diligence clause to get your, your earnest money back so you won't forfeit it, 
you really got to flip this deal in 14 days. So you, you have it under contract for 30, but your true time is 14 days. You got to get this property flipped out. So once that 14 day period is, period is up, and, it, and if you don't have a, a um, an end buyer, now you gotta ask yourself, shit, do I want to stay in or should I pull out and get my money back? It's up to you. You can bet the money on the house, let the money stay in the deal, ride the whole 30 days out to buy yourself more time to flip it out, or say no, nah, I don't want to take the risk, get your money back within your due diligence period you lose nothing but time um, go to the next deal choice is yours but you can you can you can you can do deals when they are wholesale deals when they are listed with realtors you just let the realtor know hey i'm gonna potentially assign my contract over so what you want to do and listen to the words that's coming out of my mouth anytime you are dealing with a property that you want to potentially wholesale even if you don't want to wholesale it put it in your your contract anyway or your agreement what i like to call them put it in there anyway and or a sign you put that behind your name or your entity's name and or a sign if you are not a licensed realtor and or broker you cannot legally sell houses that doesn't belong to you you only can sell houses that belong that that belongs to you or your entity so therefore when you are wholesaling and you're not licensed licensed to sell other people's property you have to assign over your agreement to an end buyer who's going to buy it to make it legal so we're not so we're not selling the house we are selling our position in the agreement that we have with the seller okay so in other words we are flipping paper that's what we're doing we're flipping paper i hope y'all understand that please know that understand that and just to let y'all know, all of my videos are for informational purposes only. I do not give legal advice. If you need any legal advice, go seek an attorney. Go seek an attorney in your area and they'll explain everything to you. They might charge you a big fee for something, I don't know. Uh, but go talk to your um, uh, attorney somewhere in your local area and get the, inform um, the, the, the information on legal stuff that's needed this is just for informational purposes only so don't hold me accountable for nothing this is for informational purposes only but i know what i'm doing so just make sure you have and or sign behind your name and or your entity's name to give yourself legal right to assign that agreement over to an end buyer so if you're dealing with a property that's listed with an agent, you make sure you let that agent who's going to drive the agreement, let them know like, hey, I may be assigning this agreement over to another investor or investment company. So would you please put and or sign behind my entity or my name? And they'll do it. No, nope, they'll do it. Boom. Just that simple. Because they understand it. Even if they don't understand it, they still have put it in there because it's something that you asked for. Okay. Trust me, I, I, I've done it several times um, dealing with real estate agents. I actually did a deal with the agent to where I use my own agreement papers. I use my own agreement, my, my own purchase sell agreements, which in most cases, they like to use whatever state they're in. They like to use the state's purchase and sell agreement documents. And I know when I first got started in the game, in his business, people just always tell me, oh, anytime you deal with an agent, you got to use their paperwork, you got to use that paperwork. So, you know, I, I kind of had that mind frame going in when I was dealing with agents, like, man, I got to use their paperwork and stuff. I hope they let me put, you know, my and or sign in it, which I didn't have any problem putting it in it when I asked for it, and they always did. But then, 
come to find out as time went on, I was able to use my own purchase and sell agreements that I had dealing with some agents. So you never know, just it's just all about who you're dealing with. All agents are not the same. Some they don't care if you use your agreements, agreement forms, others they, they want to use their state purchase and sell agreements. But the most important part is whomever agreement you use, you make sure you have and or sign in that agreement. So you're able to legally assign it over to an end buyer. And just know those are your two differences when you're dealing with a, a, a agent versus dealing directly with the seller. If you're dealing with an agent, you're going to pay earnest money and you may have to double close it. Dealing with a seller, no earnest money, no double close. That's the difference. That's the difference. And for those of you who don't understand what I mean by double close, we'll get into that in a later video. But I just want to let y'all know what the differences are and just answer that question. You can wholesale real estate even if a real estate agent is involved. Me, personally, I like to I really like to do my deals and I mainly do my deals directly with the seller. Because I like, my company, we like to speak for ourselves. We like to speak for ourselves. We don't really want people speaking on our behalf because won't nobody speak for you the way you'll speak for yourself to get a deal. My opinion. But anyway, hope that was helpful for y'all. Until next time, peace out. Yeah.